Welcome to Jurassic Park. Located on an island just west of Costa Rica, this amusement park, or maybe it's technically a zoo, is home to an extinct selection of dinosaurs, consisting of both carnivores and herbivores, a feat made possible by the miracles of modern science. But following an incident where one of the animal handlers got killed, the park investors have serious safety concerns, and will cut funding unless a few top scientific experts visit the island and give their professional endorsement. Meanwhile, the lead computer programmer for Jurassic Park, uh, Dennis Nedry, accepts a bribe from one of the company's competitors to steal InGen's dinosaur embryos for themselves. In order to pull this off, he uses a malicious computer program to disable most of the park's security, allowing him to access cold storage undetected while also locking down computer access to anyone in the control room. But when he disabled the security, he also disabled most of the electric fences that kept the dinosaurs caged, allowing them now to roam free across the island, which was a bit inconsiderate because he does this while people are currently touring the park. Jurassic Park was based off the book by Michael Crichton and directed by Steven Spielberg, immediately becoming one of the most beloved blockbusters of all time, and it's easy to see why. Just from first glance, it's a larger-than-life action-adventure film. Watching Jurassic Park on the screen fills you with as much joy as going in person. It'll make you jealous of the characters that get to experience this firsthand, but also relieved that you're actually at home because, well, in the end, this actually sucks. Dinosaurs are awesome, but that doesn't mean that a dinosaur movie is automatically awesome just because of the concept alone. This could have been a big, dumb, loud action movie, but thankfully, it takes itself seriously enough, and it treats its story and its themes with respect and care. And the characters themselves are actual characters, they're not cannon fodder. Discounting the opening scene, nobody gets gobbled up by a dinosaur until halfway through the movie. That's over an hour of people not being mauled to death by dinosaurs in a crowd-pleasing Hollywood movie. Well, that can't be right. That sounds boring. But don't worry, the pacing of Jurassic Park is downright terrific. Every single scene serves a purpose. It's very tightly written. And every little interaction and moment is entertaining and satisfying to watch. Also, this movie has a decent-sized cast of characters, and they're all cast and played perfectly. There's Alan Grant, Ellie Sadler, Ian Malcolm, John Hammond, Robert Muldoon, Donald Gennaro, Newman. There's Ray Arnold, Dr. Henry Wu, Tim and Lex Murphy. And who can forget, the unnamed gum-chewing worker in the raptor pen. It's good writing when you find yourself rooting for the human characters not to be eaten in a dinosaur movie. The book itself is much more focused on the sciencey stuff. I mean, it's confusing and weird, I don't understand any of this. The screenplay is much more focused on the philosophy and the morality of playing God, with more focus on the wonder and the excitement of the park. It's been a long time since I attempted to read through the book, but my biggest takeaway was that the movie was much more accessible and enjoyable. The science of the movie is pretty straightforward and easy to understand, without digging too much into the complexity of genetically engineering dinosaurs. It isn't important, and it isn't exciting. What does matter are the ethics regarding cloning, not necessarily how the sausage is made. The main antagonist of the movie, John Hammond, isn't an evil guy. He's actually quite likable, he's just misguided. The other antagonist is Dennis Nedry, who actually is an evil guy. I mean, what kind of sick person would glob shaving cream on a person's dessert? Oh, not to mention he steals from his workplace. Basso, he gets a bunch of people killed at Jurassic Park. Speaking of which, let's actually talk about those parts of the movie. This movie never loses its sense of awe and adventure. It doesn't lose its witty writing or its sense of humor. It's actually pretty tonally consistent throughout. Which is crazy, because it gets really scary and decently violent about an hour in. The sense of sheer hopelessness in the T-Rex scene is practically breathtaking. 
Actually, it really would be breathtaking, but they keep cutting the tension with these little moments of comic relief. And it does break up the tension a bit. But Jurassic Park isn't a straight-up horror movie. It's like six genres in one, so Spielberg has this juggling act to keep things light. But not too light. Funny, but not too funny. Intelligent, but also crowd-pleasing. And exciting without getting completely ridiculous. It's family-friendly, to an extent, but also sexy. It comes out pretty amazingly balanced, without ever really alienating anyone in the audience. He somehow pulls it off because he's a really good filmmaker. This is Steven Spielberg at his best. After the T-Rex scene, we get one exciting set piece after another. The tree scene, the jeep scene, the stampede scene, the hunter scene, the electric fence scene. And it only gets more intense from there once they get back to the visitor center. Between each action segment, there's always a few moments for the characters to reflect and discuss their situation. And it's not brilliant in the sense that it's super intelligent or complicated, but it's brilliant because each moment matters. There are no scenes in Jurassic Park that should have been cut. Every interaction complements another aspect of the movie. It's outstanding. Once the Velociraptors make their on-screen debut, the movie is nearing its end, but it definitely ends with a bang. The kitchen scene with the kids is just perfect. Then we get that silly moment with the door locks, as Lex is trying to navigate the most impractical security system on the planet, while the adults are trying to hold the door shut, and they can't reach the gun, and Tim is not helping. This is the one moment in the movie that is unintentionally funny, but that's the thing. It's maybe the worst scene in the movie, and I wouldn't change a single thing about it. They crawl around the vents and try to scale down the skeletons, and ultimately, the raptors surround the party and it looks pretty hopeless. And then we get a literal T-Rex machina. And it's beautiful. It doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't have to. You'll smile. You'll cheer. You'll clap. The movie has earned the right to be brainless and dumb at this point. My biggest critique of Jurassic Park is that sometimes, on occasion, it has a bit of comic relief that seems unrealistic for the characters. Unrealistic humor in a dinosaur sci-fi horror where a dude gets eaten while sitting on a toilet. This is the smallest of nitpicks I could possibly have, because when a movie is this good, all you can do is point out the teeny tiny little issues you had. I don't think there's anything legitimately shitty about Jurassic Park except for the literal shit that is in Jurassic Park. There's a reason that everyone likes this movie. It's appealing to everyone. Jurassic Park is a perfect blockbuster, 